All right. And we are live here on State of the Republic podcast. Uh, if you're listening to us on YouTube or Facebook, you can leave your comments. Uh, if you're on Twitter, then you might want to hop on the other platforms uh, unless they switched it. But I believe you still can't actually uh, leave a comment there, sadly. But hopefully that gets changed soon. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get our new intro video kickstarted here on the show. And then we'll go ahead and introduce our guests tonight. Someone's got I'll, I'll have my mom fix your bowl, bowl of soup with koi. Perfect, you. perfect. We can all have one after the game, regardless of the end. Because <laughs> here in Arizona, we're going to need all the shade we can get, and this is going to be a good source of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are back. Uh, that intro video is going to keep growing uh, as we um, have more live shows, as we have more funny moments, especially uh, Jared's really funny moment there, which, I mean, it. It makes us all laugh, and that's what we're all about here on State of the Republic is about just having fun, talking about soccer, but also enjoying a good laugh. And uh, we do the same on live shows, and we hope to do a lot of them here in this new year. And we're going to be doing, I'm sure, a lot more uh, live shows just in general um, as the year goes on and we have more guests on and we're you know, going all over the place here on State of the Republic podcast. And we're really excited for every one of you here to uh, join us too. And if you're watching right now, if you could share this video, this feed, whatever you're listening and watching, uh, that would be really great. Uh, that would really help us um, get more people on here too. And, uh, you know, get to know a little bit more about Fuego this season, which is what this live show is about. And, uh, you know, we're really excited to be able to uh, introduce our favorite uh, podcast, Magic William Bishop here shortly. But before we do that, let me go ahead and introduce here uh, from our State of the Republic team, Jared. How's it going, man? We, we got to coordinate here. So, <laughs> of course, I'm, I'm rocking the uh, Fuego kit as well. I mean, get, given our special guest. So, <laughs> had to show, show it off here. Yeah. Hey, we, we got to represent and, you know, we're... We're really excited. I, I can't wait for the new kit drop too. Uh, I haven't, you know, heard of anything yet. Maybe Gillian could uh, give us some insight on that too, because uh, you already know we're going to be out there uh, trying to buy, especially the home kit too, because uh, that's that's what we do. We, we like to support our local teams, and you know, we're we're here. We're ready to uh, buy all the local team jerseys this year, and uh, we're just having some delay on the new jerseys coming through, but I'm sure that we're going to get them here. Probably shortly. Um, cool. Well, cool. great entrance, Jared. <laughs> yeah, I'm liking the uh, the new video so far, and and also apologies ahead of time to to some folks. I think my internet is a little bit delayed, so you might hear some gaps, or at least from me, perhaps. But uh, hey, it's either that or it's going to be the baklava from the birthday party a couple doors down. So <laughs> please be patient. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and. You know, we're having a storm come by here in the valley, and I'm sure people in Sacramento are probably also going through it right now, too. So um, there might be a delay there, hopefully not as much on, on our side as well, but there could be, right? Or our connection could be a little spotty, but hopefully we try to capture as much um, good as possible. Cool. It looks like we have uh, William coming through here on, on the comments saying... Uh, he just took a break from watching The Last of Us on HBO Max and the MLS match between the Sounders and the Rapids, too, which that brings up a point, too, right? That MLS just got started this weekend. Uh, a lot of great games went on, too. St. Louis won their first ever game against Austin, which I was a bit shocked, right? New team on the block, 
you beat the other team that was one of the top teams, I think, last season, and they get the win. It could have been Sacramento there, but yeah, we, we know what happened. Quick quick note to T-Mobile and Metro by T-Mobile subscribers. If you haven't already, get the uh, T-Mobile Tuesdays app that possibly tonight or at least tomorrow because uh, their freebie is a free MLS season pass for this season uh, through Apple TV. And if you have an Android device, you just go through tv.apple.com to access it. So I just wanted to throw that out there for anyone else that's interested that might have T-Mobile or Metro by T-Mobile. I'm glad you mentioned that too, because that's sometimes it's easy for us to miss perks that we have. And uh, I know all about it too. If you have Amazon prime, there's a bunch of, uh, other perks you can get to and uh you know it's it's great to have that reminder too and you know hopefully everything goes well with that new deal that they have and they don't have any issues with that so awesome and we got william all saying other oh, thanks for sharing this pastime clip reacting both oh <laughs> yeah i mean the... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, of course, right? We're always going to be sharing that moment because uh, that was quite an epic moment in uh, live history, I think, for us, too. And I don't know if anything's ever going to top that, but I don't know. We'll see. It's a whole new year, new live shows, and a lot, lot could happen. It, it's a new season. I mean, there, there's plenty of chances to break the tea kettle. That is my brain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... We, we we shall see, but like I mentioned at the beginning, we are going to be doing um, more live shows, and Sharon actually isn't with us uh, today, but um, hopefully she'll be able to be back with us in uh, the next live show that we do. I know that uh, she was a, a bit busy out having dinner now, so if she's watching now or if she watches later, we hope you're having a good dinner and uh, everything is, is going great. She might pop in in the comments. We'll see if <laughs> she happens to, you know, maybe like sneak out you know, to maybe, you know, experience the rain outside or, <laughs> or for any other reason when she's able to do a comment. That is if she's not uh, busy having the, the little mint wayfair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, cool. Well, um, let's go ahead and introduce uh, our special guest tonight that will join us here to talk about Fuego uh, preseason and also uh, some of the games that we can expect uh, for them to play this season. And they already have their schedule times and all that too as well. Um, Bill and Vijay, Podcast Magic, as we like to call him here on the show. How's it going, man? Welcome back on a live show. What's up, guys? Uh, awesome to be back. Um, thank you for having me. Look forward to being on the live show and talking about preseason and the new season that's coming underway and excited to talk to you guys. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's always awesome to have you on. And, you know, we're really looking forward to the season for Fuego. I know that you guys have already had a preseason. And that's kind of what I wanted to start with, of course. And especially in that game that you guys played against Sac Republic, that you guys were victorious. You got the win at home. Uh, or I should say, I mean, it was at the college, but uh, in Fresno. And, Two one, right? Like, can you tell us more about how that match went down? A lot of us, unfortunately, I mean, we couldn't watch it because it wasn't on TV and the time wasn't convenient to even travel. <laughs> yeah, I mean, last season we played them, or we played SAC in in SAC for preseason. Uh, this preseason they traveled down to us to play us in Fresno. I think it's a uh, gonna be a great even before it becomes a rivalry uh, one day, if they're in the same league, it'll be a big rivalry, but it's a good partnership. I think to have in preseason, be able to play each other um, for them to prepare. I think we're, we're a great team to play against just like for us to prepare for the new season. SAC is, you know, um, in our opinion, one of the best, if not the best team in USL championship. So to be able to play against them in preseason to prepare is, is so valuable for us um, as we look to get going and get a jump start on our season. So just that partnership between the Fuego and SAC, I think is, is huge and really important and kind of bridges uh, the Valley a little bit uh, from North to Central Valley. So <clears throat> that was great. Uh, the game itself this time around uh, went really well. I think SAC kind of mixed uh, starters and subs into uh, together into the first half and second half squads. 
uh, we went with our full starters from the beginning. Um, been working a lot on our game plan, how we want to defend, uh, how we want to stay disciplined in our different blocks, mid block, low block, high block, what we want to do uh, in each different scenario. We've been able to work on that a little bit. We've been two weeks pretty much into preseason now, um, starting our third week. So it's been good to work on those kinds of things. We were able to show them in the game against Sack. I think we stayed patient. Sack had a lot of possession and were able to move the ball side to side, but we wanted to make it as hard as possible for them to penetrate through us which I think when we played in the Open Cup game last season, they did very, very successfully in the first half. They were able to, to penetrate quite a bit, play with quick combinations through the middle, kind of slice through us a little too easy, easier than we would have liked. So this year we really wanted to, to button that up and focus on that, and I think we were able to. Um, I hope we made it difficult for them. The scoreline shows we did, but I hope even in the play, they felt like it was pretty difficult to kind of get through us. And offensively, we were able to be very dangerous and make third man runs in behind and keep our width with our wingers while kind of keeping possession through the middle and trying to switch the point of attack as much as possible um, and utilize those high and wide spaces in between their back three and the wing backs. So overall, fantastic game. Um, great result for us, of course. Anytime you can beat a USL championship team if you're in League One is is fantastic. So a uh, good result for us in preparation. But again, I think we're two weeks into preseason. We're not trying to jump for joy or, or celebrate anything like that. Um, so, yeah, good game overall. Really fun game to play in. Saw a lot of people. Um, got to see Katie again, and she saw my wife and baby who were at the game. And just a fun reunion. Great to see Coach Briggs and Cappy and just kind of, catch up with everyone and see how they're doing really well. And um, they were able to see my my son as well, which was just super awesome and wholesome. Hmm. Well, I think, uh, yeah. yeah, I think he's, there we go. <laughs> uh, sorry, I was thinking that you were going to say something, Jared, but no, I think it's really great that like, you're able to see everyone too. And I know we wanted to see you back in SAC. Maybe this year we were all kind of hopeful. We were like, yeah, after having a standout season, maybe that happens too. But we're still hopeful for next season too, right? You know, Coach Briggs is going to get signed to a multi season contract. So uh, I think anything can happen, right? Yeah. No, anything's possible. I mean, I have one more year here after this one. Um, Obviously, let's see how this season goes. Hope, like The goal again this season is to win the championship. We saw kind of the landscape of the league last year. We were able to feel it out a little bit. Um, obviously, we travel the most, I think, out of any team, especially now with Tucson out of it. Um, we're by far the farthest West team, so we'll do a lot of the traveling. Uh, and a testament to us was I think we had maybe the second best road record last season. Um, which for having to travel so much with, you know, a three hour time change and things like that, it definitely impacts you, especially the night before the game when you're going to sleep and, you know, you it's midnight, but you feel like it's 9 p.m. And do you go to bed at 2 a.m.? And what time are you waking up? And all that stuff plays, plays a factor. So now that we've gone a year um, through it and kind of felt out the landscape of the league, we're looking... Uh, to start the season gung ho, and obviously our goal is to to win a championship. First main goal, make playoffs, um, which again last season we weren't able to do, which was a, a huge letdown. So make the playoffs this year and and win a championship, and then if if the team's doing really well and your team's winning a championship, I think the players are also going to find a lot of success. I know a lot of our players have ambitions to play. Uh, professionally for a long time and to keep climbing the ladder and climbing the levels and if some can even leave to go play in Europe that would be absolutely fantastic so mm -hmm. if you want to be ambitious like that it takes success to to be able to continue on the journey and and make a career out of professional soccer yeah no that's so true and I'm glad that they have the platform there to do so Jared yeah, I mean, any good team is going to definitely put time on the road. And the fact that uh, Fuego is essentially the road warriors of the league, 
I mean, that speaks volume on how hard uh, y'all work. I mean, like you said, being now the most Western team since uh, Tucson has moved down to, to League Two, I mean, you're definitely going to have to play pretty much most of your season east of the Rockies. But at least next year with uh, Santa Barbara Sky coming into play, that might think, make uh, things a little bit easier, not only for the team, but also for the other uh, road fans. You know, instead of having to go down to Tucson, they just – go down the highway a little bit to, to Santa Barbara. So that's going to be good to have some more competition out west um, at least uh, next year. But this year, unfortunately, with the schedule is going to be more of the same. And, I, and at least this time around, you're prepared you know, with the rest of the uh, the team to, you know, to be Road Warriors again and hopefully you know, bring that to title to Fresno. Yeah. I mean, we pride ourselves on, on Road Warriors uh, being good on the road, but the more important part, we got to take care of business at home. You know, we, we say when how hard it is to go on the road, but it's the same for teams when they come here. You know, they have to travel pretty far, and in the summer here it's pretty warm. So we need to make sure that this season we take advantage of that and, and get as many points as possible at home, and we want to make our home field a fortress. So if we're able to continue to capitalize on the road the way we did last season and build on that while at the same time fixing – um kind of the points we dropped at home, if we're able to capture more of those points, I think we were closer. So last year we didn't make playoffs, but in points we were closer to second place than we were to the team directly below us. Mm. Um, so that's how tight kind of this league was with when you have such few teams, the league's a little bit tighter. So if we were just able to take care of business a little bit better and, and secure a couple more points at home and maybe not give up late goals to, to give up a win and get a tie that's two points there or if we had the tie and we concede late to to lose that one point as well um in a couple occasions then i think we will have no problem getting into playoffs and uh, if we're able to get a high seed and have a home game with the fan base here and everything that's kind of been building since last year i think we'll have a lot of success yeah no you guys are pretty close to making it to playoffs i mean it was it was, it's one of those seasons right, where you glance back and you're like, oh, man, it was just like uh, just like few points away. It was just it really all went down to just one game. But, um, you know, it was your guys' first season and it's never easy, right, to just build a brand new team from scratch and make it to playoffs. So, you know, I, I'm sure being in the second season, a lot of guys are coming back, right? So uh, you guys will have more of that consistency, right, for this second season and you already know each other. Yeah, this will actually be since I came back to play. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> since I moved back to play in the U.S., um, this will actually be the least amount of turnover I've had on a team. I think we kept a big core group of the same players, um, which has also made it easier to acclimate to one another so quickly and early in the preseason um, and be able to have you know good games and be able to show some some flashes of continuity and consistency in how we play and that our game model is kind of being shown in the the results we're getting. So because of that, I think that'll help us a lot as well, that we haven't brought in too many new guys. And the new guys that we have brought in have been huge additions to the roster um, to help make us even stronger. And yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited and looking forward to it and, and not having to you know, get to know a whole new team over another season. We're able to build on what we had and the coach is the same as well. So um, we're really hoping that'll give us uh, an edge. Yeah, no, that's really good because consistency is such a big thing. I think with any team out there, right? I think a lot of the championship teams that we've seen in the history of the sport, they've been consistent teams, right? Especially the ones that are back to back. You realize that once you have that chemistry with everyone, once you understand precisely right to the past to how, you know, the every player, you know, what, what they bring to the table, it's uh, such a big deal, right? So it's good that they are doing that, that they're um, making sure that you have a similar team as last year and that, you know, you could learn from any mistakes that were made last year and just, you know, try to, uh, you know, be, be stronger at home, right? And, you know, get as many points as you can away, but most importantly, like try and, you know, get, get more points at home to be able to qualify. Yeah, exactly. 
So it looks like we got Jane here. I want to put up the comment here again, telling us all hi. And she would have joined if she didn't have company. So uh, thank you, Jane, for tuning in. And uh, hi, Jane. yeah, we appreciate it. Hi, Jane. Hope you're doing well. Cool. Well, uh, in terms of preseason two, I know you guys are going to be playing against uh, San Diego Loyal this weekend, right? Uh, are you guys going to be traveling over there or um, what's the situation for that game? And what, what do you expect on Saturday? Yeah, we'll be traveling over there. Um, great place to go um, to visit or to see your great city to be in. Fantastic team uh, as well. I think it's going to be another hard fought match. They just recently played against LAFC. I think it was three, one for LAFC that game, but, Still really good team. Um, we expect them to be well-coached, hardworking, having to travel to play away will be a good test for us too. We talk about that road warrior, so it'll be a good preparation for us because this season, like we've mentioned, we'll, we'll travel. So um, it'll be another great test. I think our whole preseason is filled with, with games that are really going to push us and prepare us and test us and help us grow, which... Um, I think was the whole plan of our coach and staff and ownership when they made our preseason plan. We wanted to have a preseason that was going to prepare us as best as possible for the beginning of the season and playing all these good teams like SAC. Um, that's how we're going to do that. Yeah. Well, hopefully you'll wear San Diego down uh, enough, especially for uh... – March 25th, when, when I fly in to see us play San Diego. So don't go easy on them, Billion. By all means, do not go easy on them. <laughs> that's, oh, that's not, that's not the home opener. Or is that the home opener? Uh, no, it, it's not. But um, it's the one time I'm going to fly out there because my birthday is a couple days later on the 27th. So I figure I'd make a whole weekend of it. You had to plug the birthday. I see, I see. Wait, well, I, make sure we wish him happy birthday. Jared's birthday, guys, March 27th. <laughs> well, hey, Republic FC delivered a birthday win last year. This time it falls on the Kings because I'm also going to the Kings game on the 27th itself. So, Okay, well, both teams better win that. Well, the Kings are doing really well. They won tonight against Oklahoma City. Okay, that's. I mean, they should. But overall, the whole season, they're having a great season so far. Oh, yeah. Playing well. Lakers revamped. Watch out. Sir, they're in 13th. Yep. That's fine. That's fine. We'll see. When it comes down, if well, you make playoffs, that's all that matters. Well, I'll put it this way, Luis. I'm, I'm glad we're not putting a wager with Billy in as far as uh, how the Lakers are going because uh, un unfortunately, he would have to pay out. In <laughs> but we'll, we'll see. There's a there's a couple months left. Revamp. Wait and see. I watched a couple games this week. The Warriors game looked. I mean, looked a lot better. When the, now I feel like you guys should probably wager too. Maybe yeah, Jared, you might. Like I said, there's a couple. You can win that one. <laughs> I didn't hear. Eh, that. Who knows? I mean, may, maybe if I make my way out there, if for some reason that the Lakers do get into the playoffs, you know, I'll probably bring some of the uh, uh, prickly pear candy that uh, that I brought to some of y'all uh, last year. We'll see. <laughs> Jinx them. I'll, you'll see. Let's, there's still time. <laughs> I know Jaime, Jaime Villarreal somewhere yep. right now. Too. <laughs> Big Lakers fan right there. He's like nodding his head. Yup, Bill's right. You guys are going to see. It sounds like you guys need to wager something. I'm just saying. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, that, that, that's what I'm hearing right now. Like something needs to be wagered. Maybe a, a jersey or something. Something soccer related. <laughs> we'll let, wait and see. If the Lakers don't make the playoffs, what's well, the point of wagering anything? There's no. But if the Lakers make the playoffs... <laughs> you're gonna make a deep run yeah <laughs> it, it sounds like a wager might happen if uh, they make the playoffs then like you guys could discuss especially if it's kings against lakers how epic yeah. would that be oh 
I don't want to say anything. Lakers uh, are sacked. This is State of the Republic podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's perfect. Okay, that's what happens. <laughs> Uh, well, um, yeah, we'll okay. see. We'll, we 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 can sort something out. <laughs> uh, well, going back to Fuego too, and you know this upcoming season. Before we get to to League One games and whatnot, I, I need to get into Open Cup, right? Because we know last year you guys had a really great run, and if it hadn't been for Sac Republic, like you guys, I think would have kept on going too. I mean, even that game, I felt like you guys could have uh, beaten Sac, but. This year, you guys play against Monterey, right? And you also get to host this one, just like you got to host against El Paso. So, I mean, what what do you think about, you know, being able to play against the team that is, uh, I guess, I, I would almost say, I mean, you could call them the Fresno FC too, right? Since that they kind of came out of that Fresno FC team. Yeah, well, I think the, the ownership group was that ownership group. But, I mean, all the players, I'm sure, are, are different and everything's different and um, but just to play a USL championship team, again, that's what's exciting. And I think that's the whole point of our preseason is to prepare as best as we possibly can. We want to play the best teams we can play. Um, so when you get matched up with a team like that, I know a lot of teams are looking at it thinking like, oh, I wish we get you know matched up with a lower league team or a semi-pro team. Uh, but for us, we're, we're excited to be able to play a USL championship team. Again, great for us that we get to host it again, um, just so our fans around the area can come to the game and support and watch and enjoy some soccer. So uh, it's almost like fate that we got drawn against each other and uh, the game happens to be back in Fresno. So it'll be super exciting. I think it'll be an absolute dogfight. Um, anytime a championship team plays a lower league team, um, obviously they don't want to lose either because it's, you know, you gotta, those are games you're expected to win if you're a higher league team, uh, in any cup competition, Europe as well. So, um, I'm sure they're going to come fired up and, and they'll motivate them and tell them what they need to tell them to get them fired up. And, and we're going to do the same. And I think it'll be a great battle, a great game. And we're, we're super excited to be able to play that so early on in the season as well. I'm sure, yeah, especially playing against that ownership group, right? It's like it, it it feels different, right, to play at home in Fresno against a, you know, ownership group that unfortunately had to uh, take the team away from Fresno, right, which I, I always say I think Fuego is going to be in championship one day. It's just a matter of time. And, you know, you guys out there are, like, making sure that you make the case to be like, hey, they need to be in championship. We need to have another team in California and – they shouldn't have ever been let go because, uh, you know, there's there's some market there, and you know, there you guys should be there too. Uh, yeah, no. As far as as playing on the field wise, that's as players, that's what we want to show. I think Sac did a fantastic job of that um, last season, uh, making a case for MLS again. You know, it's how many MLS teams did they beat? Made it to the Open Cup final, went on a fantastic run, and showed that. I think the gap between top championship teams and MLS teams isn't that big. And I think the same thing in the League One, that's what we want to do. The top League One teams between championship, uh, the gap shouldn't be too big. You want to be able to compete um, at least a little bit. So that's what we want to show, that we can you know, hold our own against these championship teams and even beat them. So that's what we're looking for, and that's what we're excited uh, to play a championship team and Hopefully we can win that and move on from there. Is there a bracket? Does it go beyond that, or once you win, then it'll get re, like remade the bracket? Or do you know who you'd play if we win? Or uh, I think in these early phases, you you get drawn again, but they try to keep it regional, of course, for yeah, yeah, yeah. most teams, okay. right? Although I think there's been exceptions, but um, yeah, yeah, usually they they do that too. And then I think when you start to get into more of the I want to say the round of three or round of 16, it starts, you know, to have more of a bracket style yeah, to where yeah, you okay. kind of know who, who you're going to be matched up against. Uh, but, just win I and mean, the winners yeah. get redrawn. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, it, you, you guys could be playing against anyone. It could be Sac Republic, the, the next game too, right? Just like giving you guys Last flashbacks year. to the other one. <laughs> yeah. Um, which not something we would want. I think it'd be nice if 
you, you could keep on going, but we all know that, you know, they, it's not like they could play in the final because of the way it's structured, but yeah, I mean, I get it. It's for minim to minimize travel, but it would be kind of nice if uh, it was just struggle, uh, like structured as like everyone against everyone. It's just one game. So I know you have to travel and, and all that, but make it everyone against everyone. Don't make it predictable to where it is East West, but again, it's the nature of the, the size of the country, right? Uh, looks like William uh, is having a question here. He says, uh, have you recently met these players, both current and you, for Fuego? And he also hopes you feel better. <clears throat> I don't understand. That. Have I recently met the latest players, both current and new? I think he might be trying to ask if uh, you've met any of the new guys that have... Uh, come through a team and uh if if you've had a chance to see some of your teammates too which i know i mean you you guys played against sac republic already but have you gotten the chance to meet any of the new guys or i know you guys just got started with the preseason uh yeah i mean we've been training together the last two weeks um the new guys we signed were with us from the beginning so uh we've been training together for the last two weeks and the week before that we had our physicals and all that kind of stuff, all our testing. Um, so yeah, I got to meet them and um, really nice guys, hardworking, wanting to prove themselves, uh, which I think is is fantastic. Anytime you come to a new team, you always have to look to kind of establish yourself and prove yourself and show what you can do. And I think everyone wants to be accepted by their teammates. And the way to do that is is to show that you're hardworking and you have quality and you're capable and you you're trustworthy and we can rely on you. So they've all come in and wanted to do that. And um, it's been great to see. Uh, and thank you for the feel better. I think I have like a sore throat or, or tickle in my throat, but yeah. Thank you. William. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. It's, it's going around. Um, especially with this crazy weather that we're like dealing with right now too. But yeah, no, I mean, I think it's really awesome and that's why, it's one of the things I really enjoy about watching uh, League One and League Two is that you have all those players, right, that they want to prove themselves, right? They want to make it up to a championship, maybe to MLS or, you know, heck, maybe to Europe too, even if you play in second tier, third tier uh, over there too. And, you know, it's really great that we're getting more teams in the structure, right? We just got Academica. They're going to be in League Two now, which will make it really interesting. Hopefully when they're able to enter open cup maybe you guys end up playing against them in one of the first rounds that would be really fun to see you know the two teams in the valley play against each other there but um yeah it's it's really awesome that you know they have that structure and that uh, you know you're able to see competitive teams and i think that's why you see a lot of those teams end up beating like championship teams and mls teams because i think when you're at the top when you're at in mls and even Sometimes with championship, I'd say now, uh, more recently, you have players that might just take things for granted, right? And you might just feel like, oh, I'm right here, or we could beat these guys easy because they're below our division. And that's that's when you could play that to your advantage, right? And actually prove that, like, hey, we could beat you guys because you guys are feeling really confident that you guys are going to beat us, that either, A, you play with the B team, or two, you just don't really, like, give it your all because you just feel like, you could win even if like you're only like 50 percent out there right yeah and that's always the danger when you're uh don't get caught COVID this time uh yeah i don't think it's COVID, william but yeah it's um completely agree uh that's and the gap between players isn't that big because there are so many good players especially in the central valley but in the u.s in general a lot in California, and then I think it gets um, kind of jumbled up in the Central Valley. There's so many good players that can get overseen, and with so few teams, you only have limited roster spots. Um, in League One, we have now 12 teams, right? Last year was 11. So with so few teams, there's, there's an influx of players that have ability and have... Um, talent they just aren't able to be seen as easily so when you play these lower league teams where a lot of them can have good players it's just maybe they don't have the facilities that some of the better teams have or the organization or the structure um, they haven't received the same type of coaching 
but there are players with talent, with ability um, that kind of get overseen, but then they come together in these, you know, lower league teams where it's, you know, easier to be seen or you don't have to go on tryouts or trials and get scouted or have to travel far from home to go on tryout. Uh, if you live in an area that has a team, you can just, you know, commute and play on that team. And then when you play against these League One teams, USL Championship teams, even some MLS teams, you have a different motivation and drive to show that, hey, I, sh I should be there. I can be there. And that's where we see a lot of these because the talent level isn't – obviously, you have top, top players who are top, top players for a reason, and they stand out and, you know, they make the big bucks in MLS, in Europe. Uh, even top players in USL Championship are extremely talented. But then when you have a team of 11 going against another team of 11, they, they're able to compete, and the gap isn't as big as you would expect from – a semi-pro team to a USL championship team. And you'd think, you know, oh, well, the championship team will win 5-0, 6-0, but sometimes they're mm -hmm. being 1-0, 2-1, and much closer games than people would have expected because the talent of the players isn't that big like the league difference would suggest. And sometimes it's the League One team that ends up scoring four goals on the USL championship team, right? And <laughs> Sometimes that happens too. Yeah. <laughs> which, yeah. Uh, which is great to see. I mean, uh, I still, you know, recall that game you guys played last year in the Open Cup, that first game against El Paso. And just seeing that game, seeing the full game, I think, Jared, you were watching it as well, right? And we, we just were, like, beyond excited to see you guys just, like, beat them. And not because we don't like El Paso, right? I mean, it's not like we have anything against them even though they did kick Sacramento out, I think, in one of the playoffs at uh, one point. But uh, yeah. it, it's just awesome to see uh, any, like, lower league division team, like, get a win, but not just get a win, but get a win, like, so, like, big, like that one, because it shows that, like, hey, you have really good teams in lower divisions that could really make a run and could even play at a higher division than when they're currently at, so... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look at El Paso. I mean, they, they are, they've always been a tough team no matter what. We, uh, Republic barely got its first win over the club last year. So that for a team like Fuego to, to beat El Paso, you know, that's going to be a great accomplishment. I mean, it, it took even a championship team that long to give them a loss. And to see a League One team like Fuego, you know, up in El Paso, you know, that's, you know, that's definitely a cause for celebration. But, also, you know, a good time to, to keep focused, find out what went right against El Paso when, you know, replicated against other teams. Maybe a little tweaking here and there. But, you know, at, at this point, I, I, I say move to Fuego and, and to USL Championship. Just make a California division and then just the, the rest of the uh, Western Conference teams. <laughs> you could, yeah. Or even just do like a USL League Cup. Yeah. Or it could be kind of how Luis suggested. Well, everybody plays everybody. It's not as regional. But, again, with the U.S. Mm -hmm. being so big logistically, scheduling-wise, it does get difficult, I'm sure, to, to plan everything and schedule everything. And the travel is not easy. So a lot of yeah. things to consider. Yeah, although I do think, I mean, that idea implementing it in at least in League One where they could have the West and East structure like they do in Championship would be really good because, I mean, you mentioned it right now, there's only 12 teams in League One. And I think there's a gap between League Two to Championship, right? And you need League One in between to be that like development for those players who have the potential to go to Championship, but it's too early for them to be there. And League One is that league specifically, and that's why it's there. That's why the structure is there. But they need to expand to having more teams in the West. Make sure you guys don't have to travel too far and make that like final game special, right? Against a team that maybe you didn't play against, right? Unless they end up doing like championship or you have some games against, you know, uh, other conference teams. But they, they should definitely do something like that. And I know it's probably a matter of time, right? I know Jared mentioned Santa Barbara, but hopefully we get more teams, right? I mean, California is basically like the size of a country, right? So we should have more California teams, at least in, in League One. 
yeah, when I joined the Fuego last year, I was very, very surprised how few, or well, not how few, zero, how, uh, how many other teams in California there were in League One. I thought for sure there would be an LA team, maybe a Bay Area team, mm -hmm. um, with how many teams there actually are in California, but there are a lot in championship. There's a few in MLS as well. So <clears throat> maybe that those like LA markets are pretty tapped out in, in terms of, of soccer teams right now. So maybe that makes it difficult for teams to join league one. But I thought for sure there would be more teams on the, on the West coast than just one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they would have to find markets to that. So I'm glad Santa Barbara is a perfect market. You don't really have anything else there to um, Stockton. Now that they have the USLW Stockton Cargo, maybe they could yeah. have a men's Stockton Cargo team that competes in League One. That would be another interesting uh, market for League One as well. So, yeah, I I'm hoping. I mean, if they do now good, I think there might be something there. Now, there was also the announcement earlier this year about uh, Monterey Bay FC, too. Um I'm not sure. I didn't catch which league they're playing in. If it's either uh, League One or League Two, I think I'm it's League Two. Sure. It's League Two. two. Yeah, I because there's a lot of two teams in, oh. in League Two. I mean, the Fuego have the Fuego oh, yeah. team, right? And in, in League Two, so yeah, yeah, I believe it was it was there. I think League One, they they wouldn't really use it as much for like a two team. They would go more for uh for League Two for that. So uh, so that's what I'm thinking. If they look at uslw teams that might only have the women's team maybe they that's how they can you know get some men's teams to play for league one and now you have two teams right for every uslw team just like you have oakland roots now have the oakland soul and uslw make you know uh, teams like that like let them have their uh, team for the other gender play in their particular league and you just help grow that market even more because now you're expanding the opportunities and maybe minimal cost because you already have the structure in place with one team. And so I'm just saying they, they need to consider that option too. And, you know, and also I guess people who are putting their money to also maybe consider doing that too. So Lee Nevis with Stockton Cargo, please like invest in a team in USL league one. Cause that'd be so awesome to have a team here in the 209. Looks like we got a comment here. Let's see what's this. So it's here. Here we go. So it's William saying, I agree with Jared. I'm sure Fuego should move to Championship League in the future. It's, it's what we're hoping for. I know that Fuego wanted to build a new stadium, right? Have you heard any updates on that too? On like what their progress is on maybe like getting that like to happen maybe in like two, three, four years? Uh, I just know that's still their goal. Um, as far as progress, I'm not sure what's what kind of progress has been made, but from talking to them, I know that's still their goal. That's their ambition and they still want to continue moving forward with it. And um, they're still sticking behind the team and wanting to follow through with that. That's awesome. And I'm glad this season they're, they're actually going to be opening it um, entirely, right? The entire stadium too, like behind one of the goal nets. Is that going to be happening already in the first game or are they still working through uh, details with the permit and trying to like get that situation? Uh, I'm not sure. I actually haven't been to the to the Fresno State field since our last home game, um, so I haven't seen. I don't know what kind of progress has been being, being made or if if they've continued working on it. Um, I haven't been out to the field to see it. Well, hopefully they get that because I mean. I'm still not really understanding as much like why they couldn't allow them to be there. Maybe it was like a safety or something. I mean, just looking at it, it looked like anyone could be there. <laughs> it looked like it was already all, all good. But uh, I mean, it ultimately it ends up, you know, allowing you guys to have more people on the stands. And especially when it comes to playoff time, I mean, you know, it, it sucks to not be able to get a ticket. And if there's the seats, then, you know, you should be able to be there right and <laughs> utilize uh, as much as you can and i'm sure if you guys were to go to playoffs they'd probably try and do something on the other end right behind your guys's team bench and maybe <laughs> bring in some more benches or come up with something maybe do just standing only uh situation there around the, <laughs> the benches but um i guess you know it's always good to plan in advance because i really do think you guys uh 
are going to be in playoffs. And if you make it to a final, I know we're all going to want to be there. And it's it's going to be tough if like we're limited on how many seats they have. You're absolutely right. I mean, I'm sure as a club, you want as many seats as possible. Um, of course, as long as you're able to fill them, you don't want to have too big where, you know, we've seen, I played for Timbers too. And sometimes we'd get to play in the, the main stadium. Um, and, you know, we'd only have a few hundred fans. And when they're in that huge stadium, it, it like it gets right. It's, it's so hard. So of course you want to be able to fill the stadium and then um, always have a little bit more capacity than the tickets you're selling. So I'm sure that's their goal as well. And if, if we do make playoffs, I know obviously the, I think the games will sell out at Fresno State and um, and then the final itself. If you make the final, yeah, I think that's a no-brainer, especially if you're hosting it and, and we get the final to be in Fresno, it would be incredible. Yeah, maybe they would even consider playing in like the, the football stadium, right? Be like, well, it's right there. It's it's all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that would work or what kind of like clearance is needed with the league or what happens. But if, if they're able to get, you know, a much bigger venue, um, that could be interesting. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm sure the league would be like, hey, if you could sell the tickets, then we're all for it. You're going to make we'll a, you a spectacular yeah, we'll final. That. That's true. That's um, true. Cool. Well, let me go ahead and share my screen here so we can take a look at your guys' season now in League One um, and basically what that's going to be looking like. So home opener is going to be happening. Uh, thankfully for you guys, it'll be different than what does at Sacramento where – uh, their home opener will be in the second week, not in the first week, but you guys are hosting uh, North Carolina FC. And I mean, it's great, right, that you guys are able to host and you don't have to start your uh, your traveling journey from the get-go, right? Yeah, no, that's a huge help. I think last season, it ended up being like our first four or five games, six games were on the road and our first, like the first, seven or eight of our first 10 games were on the road uh, last season as they were, I think, getting the stadium ready and making sure everything was good to go. We had to travel a lot. So this year getting to play our first game at home, I think will give us a boost, uh, especially as we look to be, you know, more productive at home and, and play better at home and defend our home a little bit better, Have take some pride in our home field now that we've been there already one season obviously last year it's a brand new environment um, new players but now that we've been there for a full season and our fans know the venue and everything i think it'll be very important that we um, solidify ourselves at home and, and start getting results right off the bat yeah luckily there's more home games too although they do make you guys travel right in this stretch here too right between knoxville Greenville, Charlotte, it's almost like at that point, like, have you guys just have a <laughs> temporary residence and <laughs> somewhere in, like in the middle of all those? <laughs> uh, right. So that's, yeah, that's pretty intense. I mean, and you have a midweek game in, you know, on top of things. <laughs> yeah, and that's where we talk about. That's where you got to be together as a team and you're spending a lot of time together in hotels and traveling and airports and buses and becomes really important what you're doing, what you're putting in your body, what kind of nutrition you're having, how you're taking care of your body. Um, so when you travel those stretches of road trips where, you know, we're flying thousands of miles, um, that's kind of where a league like this is won or lost. Yeah. That, that's why I keep saying again, and not to, not to repeat it again, but that's why we need teams that are more uh, nearby too, so you can mix them in and still have those traveling games, but distance will be less. I mean, heck, maybe you could take the bus if it's a Bay Area game, right? And you don't have to go through all that, too. Because I'm sure you guys probably, for the most part, you probably have to do connections in most of the locations that you travel to, right? Since the Fresno Airport, you don't have that many, like, or at least, like, many, like, sub-markets that they would fly direct to, right? Yeah. No, I think other than maybe Tucson, maybe Colorado... Uh, but Tucson's out now. Maybe Colorado will be able to go direct. Outside of that, I think we connected for every other uh, away trip, uh, which again, yeah, that has an impact as well because then you're in the plane, getting off the plane, hanging out in the airport. Um, 
we had some canceled flights last time that we had to deal with and getting in super late to some places but again that's just part of it and and how well you're able to handle that and overcome it and just kind of accept it and roll with the punches um, can dictate whether you win or lose or draw get, get some points on the road uh, just because of how you're able to handle the adversity of the travel yeah that's definitely a lot of air miles that's for sure <laughs> so uh, I, hit, uh, yeah. I, hit, I think gold status on is it gold oh. status is the base one on uh, american airlines so just from last season's travel and making an account i was able to hit gold status and i don't think i get much for that one it's the first first level i think it's at forty thousand miles i got it so but still pretty cool well still, pretty cool. well, get still you're getting perks i get to claim it <laughs> yeah the, the perks of traveling for your job right you're able to um you know accumulate those two and uh, i mean after this season you'll you'll probably get a couple of uh flights maybe out of that personal yeah. flights right vacation I'm sure flights. i'll get yeah i'll get i'll be able to use the miles to to reimburse them for some flights but i tell you what i would trade the miles for an la team and a san francisco team and a santa barbara team <laughs> so fortunately yeah. we'll get one next year but the, the close teams would be a lot more fun and they would alleviate some of that repetitive travel to the east coast where we could go to the east coast one weekend then be home the next weekend and then maybe just go to santa barbara the next weekend and then back to the east coast as opposed to you know we're home east coast home east coast home east coast yeah uh, the, the, there might be you know that there might be something there and i think that you know even though santa barbara right they won't be till like next year too who knows there might be another couple teams that come by right that are like hey i'm i'm ready to go next year like I we can so. get it all yeah. happen so hopefully or even if it's not in california i mean it's a shocker that it wouldn't be but you know even if it's in washington oregon um even utah right just i yeah. mean at this point we anywhere want anything that's <laughs> yeah anywhere <laughs> we're saying anyone idaho even come yeah. um arizona really? again too Bring, come back yeah yeah the league's growing yeah but we'd love to get a team here in arizona i mean because at least that that way we can have another chance of having you come back here i know last october that uh i guess with the schedule and everything like that things got uh sent off a little kilter but you know it'd be great if maybe uh rising fc maybe they have a rising fc too and maybe they play at a uh, gcu in the uh, western part of phoenix or uh somewhere maybe tempe you know as long as it's not in chandler no but it would be great if there was a, a league one team here so that way you're not having to travel all that far uh, to the east coast i mean that kind of breaks up the monotony so who knows uh, we'll, we'll cross our fingers for that yeah no, exactly and on the flip side from getting to travel i'm seeing a lot of places that i've never been to before and places that I probably wouldn't go to if it wasn't for soccer or for League One. Um, so, I mean, that part of it is actually really cool and getting to see other parts of the country. And I'm grateful for that part of it, for sure. Yeah, especially because being in championship. Well, now I guess, you know, we have some teams that, you know, play amongst each other from like different conferences, right? But you don't get to travel as much, right? I think they probably have like, I want to say like three, maybe four, um, like inter-conference uh, away trips, right? I would say. So yeah. it's it's definitely yeah. There's there's some good good to it, right? Too, and uh, but it looks like you know between April 30th to May 20th, those three games that stretch there, they they'll all be at home. So they're gonna have you guys traveling a lot real quick, and then kind of give you a break, right? And be like, all right, I'll give you the next three home games and. I don't know why they do this. I know with SAC, it's happened a couple of times already with the championship, but I think they need to do a better job at like looking at each week <laughs> and being like, let's not do like three consecutive and let's like do home away, home away. But I, I don't, say, I don't know what happens. It's got to be tough because I'm sure some, some people's stadiums have events as well and concerts and other things like that that they have to work around so maybe they're not available this weekend but then the other other team's not available that weekend and that's why there's sometimes midweek games and i i don't 
I'm not jealous at all of, of whoever does the scheduling for, for pro leagues in general, especially League One and Championship. It's got to be it's got to be a nightmare, and I'm sure they get a lot of feedback from a lot of clubs. Like, hey, what the heck? Why did you you know do this, do this, do this? Like, I don't envy them at all. That's got to be a tough job and a lot of logistical stuff to keep track of to try to organize and give everyone as fair as possible a schedule. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, because you're always going to end up maybe making it not as fair for someone, right? But then you're like, all right, well, most of the league is happy. One team wasn't happy, but it it's never going to please everyone, right? There's always going to be that. Yeah, um, there's no way to get everyone their ideal schedule and home and away and XMO. Now we have 12. Last year with 11 teams, obviously one team didn't play each time. So it was even you know, messier because you don't have an even amount of teams that you're scheduling. So, yeah. And I mean, that lends itself to be like, what well, is it really fair or not? Right. But I mean, I know that things happen and all that too, but you kind of would wish that everyone would play, you know, twice, right? Like maybe other leagues, you would have uh, two games like, amongst each other. Maybe you add in like two, three other games against a local rival. But I know for you guys now, I mean, it's, I don't even know what I would consider your guys' rival too, unless there was a team that you guys played against last season that you'd be like, well, this team, you know, there was a bit of a clash, right, on the field that you would consider them. But, I mean, is West, there really anyone at this point? West West against the rest. Everyone. That's what right? we are. We're Fuego against everybody. I don't think we have a rival. <laughs> uh, and see, that's the problem. No enough, really right? Right? Yeah, I mean, even looking at the schedule, it looks like we play Colorado Hailstorm in Colorado twice in less than a month. Oh, yeah, and twice. Wow. So you talk about the scheduling. It's got to be tough to to try to make it, you know, we go May 27th and then June 24th. Yeah, same spot, too. If you you enjoyed anything... The first time you were there, you can go back, right? Yeah, there <laughs> like, you go. Oh. Hey, we'll be back in less than a month. <laughs> might, might as well leave your stuff in like the hotel already and be like, we're going to come back here. and yeah, we'll be back. <laughs> yeah, just hold it for me. <laughs> um, but you guys are playing against Ford Madison too. And it, this Andrew still playing for him? Like, the, what, what's the situation? Yeah, he's still there. Talked to him the other day. Um, he's dealing with a, a sports hernia um situation coming back now and working his way back and um just you know grinding and doing his physical therapy um trying to stay involved with the team and it's always tough anytime you have an injury or any kind of injury um but he's still there looking to be ready for the beginning of the season and um just hoping everything goes well for him um, that he can heal well and, and mentally that he's good, physically that he's good, because um, he'll be a, a key player for them. So I think um, if he's able to come back and healthy and, and feeling good, um, that'll be important for them. But yeah, he's still there um, enjoying it. I think it's frozen now. So I think they're having to, to figure out where they're training and working out. And because I think they had a storm. Um, it's been snowing and frozen there. So. Oh well, yeah, that's that's rough. I mean, we, we have our own storm here, but I mean that's a whole another storm. I was gu- I was gonna say not to use hell storm here, but <laughs> that's a whole another hell storm. <laughs> that's a different storm. Yeah, our yeah. storms are storms, but not like that. Yeah, it's uh, something else, right? And I'm sure when they come over to your guys's um, field, and I don't know if like. You maybe hear any comments, but I'm sure, you know, not having teams in the West Coast and Fresno being like a hot spot, right? I mean, overall, the Central Valley, we know when when it gets hot here, it gets hot, right? Especially in Bakersfield, it's probably the hottest spot, not counting like Death Valley or anything, but probably one of the hottest spots in the whole state. And it, it's got to hit them, right? When they go to Fresno to experience that right from like cold environments, right? Especially in the summer where, where, I mean, they're not having anywhere near the temperature that we're having here, right? Well, a lot of these places get really hot. They're just humid. Mm. So they'll be a lot more humid. Fresno, the big difference is it is a little bit hotter. 
you know, five to 10 degrees hotter, but it's a very dry heat. So it's much different. A lot of these places will be in the 90s, but it'll be like 70% humidity. Oh, so it's, a, it's also a different type of environment and the breathing. It's a little bit harder as well. The air feels a little thicker. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, pro there's advantages, disadvantages, pros and cons of each kind of each one of these uh, cities that has a League One team. Uh, if you go to forward Madison early in the season, it could be really, really cold, a lot colder than it is in Fresno, you know, and if you come to us mm -hmm. in the summer, much drier type of heat. If you go, you know, Union Omaha was crazy windy the first time we went there, like probably one of the windiest games I've ever played in. Um, mm -hmm. And the wind ran the length of the field. It wasn't across, so it directly oh. affected one team. So um, that did make it a lot difficult. So there's a, a challenge and a unique aspect to each one of these cities and environments that makes it more interesting because it's which team can adapt the best to each mm. different climate and, and different situation. And that's generally the team that will come out more uh, successful more often over the span of the season. I'm sure at Hailstorm, they have like high altitude too, right? Just like, I don't know how far they are from Colorado Springs, but I mean, I, I know how, how it can they be. They do higher there. altitude than Fresno. For sure, yeah. it was. Oh yeah, you definitely <laughs> notice it when you're out there running and playing in the game. You you can feel it a little bit. Yeah, no, that's rough too. I mean, it, I know when Sack played in Colorado's and regular season, it really, really hit them too. So, it's not a uh, anything easy there, right? Um, and it looks like you guys have two consecutive home matches too, right? From July 29th and August uh, 5th. Again, I think it's great for you guys to have. Summer matches, right? You know it gets hot, but um, I mean, that's why you guys are called Fuego, right? In part <laughs> because of how it feels like you're actually uh, in an oven. But the good thing about the summertime here is that you know that games are going to be canceled, right? They might have the hydration breaks, but at the very least, they won't be like, oh, there's a storm. You know, we can't yeah, play the game, right? There's a those, tornado. There's summer thunderstorms or tornado warnings or anything like that, fortunately, yeah. Although we did get a tornado warning. I don't know if it hit Fresno for you guys too, but I know here in Modesto, uh, there was a tornado warning like two months yeah. ago too in the middle of the night, which is crazy. But yeah, that, that wasn't anything compared to that. But yeah, and it looks like, you know, one of the good things too is that like you guys have, even though you guys have to do a lot of traveling, you, have, you guys had those three consecutive home games. You have those other two consecutive home games and like I think July and then, August, you have another two consecutive home games. So it's good that at least they kind of did that, right? Because well, you play, yeah. you play the, the same amount of home games as away games. So any two consecutive home games just means we have two consecutive away games somewhere else in the schedule. So I think do, maybe doing, again, logistically, I, I can't imagine how difficult it is to do. You'd, ideally, you'd want home away. Home away, mm -hmm. home away. Because then the two away games, it's tough too. Because we'll go to the game, travel Friday, play Saturday, travel back all day Sunday, kind of rest Monday. But then you prepare Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You have to travel again, play Saturday, travel mm -hmm. back Sunday. So when you have those consecutive away games too, it's tough. And depending if one of them's a midweek game, um like here it looks like we play august 30th then september 2nd then september 10th the 10th one's home but the 30th and the 2nd do we decide to stay away or do we drive do we fly back to fresno and then fly back out again <laughs> to north carolina i, I so, think to me it make more sense like stay like don't don't travel back i feel like it it ends up being more expensive to travel so much back and forth when you could just get a hotel, stay, you know, or maybe already go to the venue that you're going to be playing at, right? And already get situated there because Saturday to Wednesday, it's a short amount of time to be like flying back and forth and you're losing out on a day of from doing that, right? And it's just, it's just a lot. But how did you guys do it like last year? Was it like you flew back still or did you ever actually like stay when you had that midweek game? We did at the end of the season. We stayed. 
Um, and it was good. I mean, I think it was good for the body. Um, but yeah, I guess pros and cons, there's pros and cons of doing it both ways. So it would just be what <coughs> the, the coach with the players and what the ownership are, are able to do um, financially. I don't know. Yeah. I can't imagine the difference, but having to put a full team in a hotel for three, four five nights, food and stuff like that. I'm sure that gets expensive too, but flights also, man, flights are crazy expensive. Yeah. So if you're having to travel back and forth, um, yeah, that can get pricey too. <laughs> I think as a player, I'd probably prefer to stay. That might be the best, but then, you know, you're in, in a hotel, you're not in your own bed. You're not really mm -hmm. doing your normal routine. Um, so that's another aspect of it. If you do stay, that could be good or bad, maybe better for some players, worse for other players. Yeah, no, that's true. And it, it depends, like, of course, your uh, personal life and all that, if, if you'd prefer to to stay or not to. And it is a shame, right? I mean, it affects everyone there. And that's why, again, more the reason why I'm like, USL, if we need to go and <laughs> write something as fans and be like, hey, like, minimize our travel. We want to make sure that, you know, they're giving us their all in those games and, you know, just like, let's have a better product on the pitch. If you just do West East, like you do championship and they're doing it with League Two already. You have a bunch of like different regions, right? So I don't see why, you know, they can't do the same with League One and just like help you guys, you know, just like not have to do all that. And we well, wouldn't we even have to. More, we need more know. West Coast teams. If they did it now, we would just play Colorado over and over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> right. It just uh, it, no, then it would become a rivalry too. But then, uh, yeah. yeah. 30 games a season against Colorado. Well, we'll do our best. I'm sure Jared and I will try and talk to Stockton Cargo's president too. You know, we know him very well. And uh, we'll try and see if he could like maybe get a team at least. So <laughs> you guys will just have to take a bus down to Stockton, you know, just to, that would be sure, cool. I mean, that would have for sure become a rival if they're able to do it. Yeah. The proximity and, you know, that'd be fun. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm already thinking, uh, I mean, I was going to say a 99 cup of sorts too, because you got SAC as well. And imagine all three teams right there. And maybe Bakersfield someday also joins in with the uh, League Three One team. Tournament. Yeah. All throughout 99. Make it easier for people to just hop on 99 from Sacramento to Bakersfield. Invite yeah. team, Academica League Two. Yeah. Lots of ideas. Yeah. We have to, we'll, we'll have to figure out if there's a way for us to, share them and maybe make something happen because that would be fun to do it even even just over like a week and a half or something yeah um but uh yeah i mean season's looking really good too you guys are going to be playing on my birthday as well i'm debating i might be able to go to i know it's a midweek game which i wish it would have been on like a weekend day but it might happen i'll have to see um how my schedule's like by then too but you guys are closing against Richmond Kickers away, and uh, I mean it should be should be a good season overall, right? Because you, you mentioned you some new teams too. I think Lexington is one of the new teams, right? If I'm not mistaken, and Nashville too, right? Those are the two teams. Uh, Lex Lexington and one Knoxville. Knoxville and one Knoxville. Okay, yeah. So I mean, good rivalries, right? I mean Lexington. I don't know how far they are from uh, Louisville, but we know Louisville's got a good. USL championship team. So definitely, I mean, there's good players in Kentucky from what it seems like. So I'm sure that that should be a, a good team. And also Knoxville. I mean, we know Nashville is right there as well. And they've had good USL teams as well. So good markets. I'm glad that they're putting teams there. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm excited. I haven't been to either city. So for me, again, it's cool to get to travel there and see these cities and kind of see what the the talent pool is like in these other places and states and cities around the, the country. So I'm looking forward to those games for sure. And hopefully we can uh, give them a, a warm welcome to League One. Yeah. Hey. We're really excited for the, the home opener on March 22nd. And I know that, you know, people in Sacramento, they're always making trips out there too. I'm surprised Scott wasn't able to hop on here too. I know he went to the 
sack game and you know he's he's always going down there too i think ryan's a season ticket holder as well and you know we're we're getting more people out there supporting fuego and we wish you the best of luck you know that we're gonna be checking you guys like we're always watching uh you guys too luckily we'll still be able to stream you guys on espn plus and hopefully they keep on doing that i know jared doesn't really like espn plus right but um I think whatever platform it is, I hope that they offer, you know, all the games What's in one. What's ESPN so. Plus, Jared? What, what don't you like about ESPN Plus? The mouse. <laughs> oh, well, first of all, the, the the price increases every season. I mean, I I, I still remember it used to be $5 a month. Now it's jumped up to like, I, I know, I mean, it's granted it's still cheaper than egg. But uh, at the rate it's going, you know that might not be the case for much longer. <laughs> but uh, on, on the good on the good side, you know we are still able to get uh, USL uh, League One matches. So that that's that in itself makes it worth the money. I mean, as well as with the uh, USL Championship, because the uh, USL has decided for at least one more season they'll partner with the ESPN Plus. That'll give uh, the league or leagues uh, time to reconsider. Uh, media partners uh, as far as that goes so who knows maybe in 2024 it could be a different streaming uh, partner i mean it could be maybe paramount plus could be uh hbo max i mean we'll we'll see how 2024 goes but at least for 2023 you know it's it's at least going to be with espn plus so i know probably come uh, a couple weeks from now i'm gonna have to do my usual shuffle of uh, resubscribing to ESPN Plus intently for the, the USL Championship and League One seasons. Well, of course, now also for uh, USLW. But then again, I'm not sure if uh, W is partnering with Eleven Sports still or ESPN Plus. But we'll we'll come to, to that as it as it hits uh, closer to May. Yeah. Cool. Well. Billion, thank you so much as usual for hopping on here for your time uh, spent here talking to us. And as I mentioned, as the season goes on, we'll probably have you hop on the podcast to give us an update on how things are going, how the team is doing, and we'll be making it out to games as as we always try each each year. Yeah, no, thank you guys for having me. Always a pleasure to to hop on and and talk to you guys about everything that's kind of going on and. Um, we'll definitely have to get on after the the first round of Open Cup games too, just to touch base and see you know how the games went, and uh, it'll be interesting to see which teams are still in it after that point. So um, yeah, looking forward to it, and thank you guys for having me. Have a great evening, and have a great evening to everyone who tuned in. Um, hope it was fun for you guys. Awesome, yeah, and thank you so Give much. Give our love to the family. Yeah. I shall, I shall. They're in the room. Everybody's doing well. Baby's good. Uh, wife is doing well. Everyone's healthy. So uh, everything good on our end. Great to hear. Awesome. Yeah, we're, we're glad to hear that. Um, cool. Well, thank you so much again, Billion and Jared. Thanks for also hopping on and everyone else for tuning in, whether you're tuning in now or after. I know a lot of people, I think, tune in after the fact, too. And, and we really appreciate everyone who hops on here and also listens to uh the podcast shows as well so Definitely. have a great night and everyone and yeah also kiss, kisses and love to to mama sharon sorry uh we <laughs> missed you tonight but look forward to seeing you on the next one and uh hope you're doing well as well miss you yeah she, she couldn't actually like uh miss out on the on the dinner too we we're, we're oh, thinking yeah. maybe she was gonna go out to Catch you know e- explore outside and <laughs> Yeah, we're like, uh, we'll maybe see. you we'll... could say you're going to the bathroom and then like just put a comment through and, <laughs> and just say hi. Yeah, but no, we'll yeah. see her on the next one and we stay in touch with her. So um, hope she's doing well. Yeah, and, and we'll probably be uh, doing a trip out to Fresno, hopefully this season. I know last season we kind of wanted to do that, too. So hopefully me and her and I know with Jared, it's a little bit more tougher to get all three of us there, too. But I think it'd be nice for the two of us to make it out to Fresno there, too. So we're. We're trying our best to. We're looking at our schedules, looking at all of our teams, right? USLW has more teams now, too. So we're trying to figure out each weekend what, what the plan will be. So we're excited. I mean, there's a soccer going on here in the room. Great yeah. time. Awesome. Well, everyone, and we hope you have a good night. See you.
And since Sharon's not here to say it, cue the music. Oh, thanks. 